Hi. This video is part of a series in which I learn about programming a retro video game on a Commodore 64 in assembly. The code I'm using is from the game that you see right now. It's called Supernatural and it's written by Georg Rottensteiner. You may also know it as Guns and Ghosts. This is not a tutorial, just me learning game programming. Enjoy the video. Right, part four of the series. Uh, last time we uh, created a sprite and uh, also we put it in a location uh, under the IO mapped um, registers of the VIC-2 chip. This time we're going to start moving the player sprite uh, using the joystick. And uh, it's interesting, interesting piece of code. It's, it's not too complex, but uh, it requires a little bit of knowledge of how the Commodore 64 works with sprites. So I'll just run through that quickly. Just to recap, the screen character memory, I'll quickly build the code here. Let's see if the, if the output was uh, okay. I think it was, oh, build it please. There we go, no problems. So the screen uh, character memory starts at this location. Uh, screen color memory, that's no different, but there's a sprite pointer base now. Now you have to realize that the uh, screen character memory is a 1K block of memory. Uh, but only 1,000 bytes are used to display characters on the screen, leaving 24 bytes at the end of that memory um, undisplayed. Now, the last 8 bytes of that 24-byte uh, block is the sprite pointer base, which, if you do the math, uh, starts at 1,016 bytes after screen character, because... 24 minus 8 is 16. Now each uh, byte in that location holds a number and you divide, you uh, multiply that number by 64 um, and that gives you the location in uh, memory where the uh, sprite shapes go. That is counting from the start of Vic memory, of course. Um, so the VIC does this multiplication by 64. All we have to do is uh, um, determine where our sprite shapes are going to be. Now our sprite base here is 64 decimal. So if we multiply 64 by 64, we get um, 1000 hex. Is that correct? Let's check that. Let's check that. Let's just check it. Um, Get the calculator out. Programmer one, decimal 64 times 64 gives us 1000 hex, correct. So um, the VIC base was C000, so we add 1000 and that gives us D000. And if you remember, that's exactly the place where we put our first sprite shape. So the sprite player is at sprite base, which is 64 plus zero. If we added another sprite, we could add plus one here, which would make 65 times 64 is the next uh, block of uh, memory that has the next sprite shape. So that's basically how the, uh, how the sprite pointer base works. Um, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of the code because we have a new set of tables. We have a uh, an exposition table. This holds the exposition for each individual sprite. We have eight. That is each sprite that is being displayed at the moment. Um, we have a byte holding uh, the X extend bit, which I'll get into later. And there is a Y position for each uh, sprite. So we can index this. Our sprite number, so if we have sprite number 0, we look at sprite pos y plus 0 and we end up with its y position. So we can just look up the position there. 
We also have a bit table. Uh, the bit table, I've, I've added some comments here. This is how it works. Um, sprite number. Um, if, if we index this table, sprite number zero, sprite number one, sprite number two to sprite number seven, it gives us a value that sets a single bit. We're going to use this information as a mask onto this byte. Now, this is where I'm going to need to draw something. This is paint. Let's uh, maximize it. Um, if this is the entire screen area that the Commodore 64 has, then um, to be fair, this is the area that we see. This is uh, judging from a sprite point of view. This is the X position. If X is zero, the sprite is here. And X is a byte, of course, which can go up to 255, which is not at the end of the screen. It's somewhere around here. So that means that if the, the, the player sprite just, uh, its X position increases, I'll put X up here. If it increases to 255 and we go one step further, it goes back to one and it would just switch back to this position. So it would wrap around, which is not what we want because we want the, the, the player sprite to move in this area as well. So that's where the, uh, the extend bit comes in. As soon as we move over this border and we set the extend bit for the corresponding sprite, the Vic will know that X is zero, which starts on this side of the line again. We'll, we'll just, uh, with the extend bit on means that the sprite will, will be set here and increasing the X position, we'll just move the sprite in this direction. So um, moving back, we have the same case. If we decrease the X position and it comes to zero um, and the X, uh, the, the extend uh, bit is on, we are on this side of this line. If we switch it off, it jumps back to here. If we decrease X, it'll become 255 and we have to realize that it's, uh, it's there. So the two special cases, if we're moving right and X moves from 255 to zero, we have to set the extend bit. If we move the sprite from right to left, X will go from zero to 255 and we have to clear the extend bit, right? And there is code to do that. So we move paint out of the way. I'll um, go back to the top of the code and we'll just start scrolling down until we see something that we don't recognize yet, um, which is in the main game loop. We've removed the um, uh, the border color flashing. You know, we've, we've seen that now, but we have player control. In the code above here, um, uh, just as last time, the sprite is just enabled and shown. You know, you can see the last bit of enable the sprite. So the player sprite is on screen, and we now give the player control in each frame of the of the game. You know, each uh, turn of the the game loop. So what happens? Player control. Well, here we are. Um, this register. This is another Vic register. Um, and it holds a value for every position um, of the joystick. And there's just a table in the programmer's reference uh, manual that says, well, if you read two in this, uh, in this register, it will mean that um, a down was pressed. You know, it's, uh, uh, um, and if you read one, it, it would have been uh, up and so on. Left is four and right is eight. There are also diagonals, but we're not looking at that right now. Um, also, uh, nice to know that the bit operation, um, there's an and 
of the accumulator with the value that is in this register. So that's a, just a nice way of testing uh, whether or not it was 2. So let's um, assume that the player pressed down. So that's a Y movement. You know, let's start with a simple case. Player moved down. We go to that declaration. Um, and all it does is it loads 0 into the X register, which is the sprite number. And we s jump to sprite, move sprite down, which moves the sprite actually down on the screen. And we jump back into the game loop. So what does sprite move down do? And we go to that declaration. It says, well, increase the Y position of the corresponding sprite. You know, we, we use that table again. And this is our own table. So this is not yet telling the Vic that we are uh, increasing the X position. We're just updating our own position table. Then something happens. We have to determine where in Vic memory uh, the Y position goes. And because this function can be used for any sprite number, we have to calculate the position. And uh, you should know that in uh, the Vic memory, these locations right here um, hold the X and Y position. So at this location, D000, which is 53248, uh, uh, is the sprite zero X position, and in five three two four nine, which is D zero zero one, is the sprite zero Y position. So, in order to determine in which location you should update the Y position, you either select this value or this value. You multiply the sprite number by two, and you get the right memory location. So how do you multiply something quickly by two? You know, the sprite number. Well, we, the sprite number was given in X because that was is what was done before this was called. Uh, we move X to A. We do an uh, arithmetic shift left, which is basically uh, a multiplication by two because this is a binary system. You know, if, if, the, if the byte looked like this before the ASL, we perform the ASL, then the byte will look like that. Uh, this one will just have shifted one to the left, which means a multiplication by two. Uh, we move that to the Y uh, register. Then we load the actual uh, Y position that we calculated here because we increase the existing Y position, and we store that in the correct location. So that's how you move a sprite. As soon as this command is executed, the sprite is actually moved. So we go back up, um, and we want to know what happens when we do left and right. Well, let's first do the move player right, player move right. Um, and I'll get the drawing in here first. Player move right, from left to right, we want to set the, um, the correct byte. Uh, the correct bit in the extend X uh, byte. So move sprite right. We go to that declaration. And here we go. We do the same thing. We increase the X position in our table. Uh, and then we load that value. And we want to check whether or not it has become 0. Right, so this checks if uh, it, it, you know in any normal situation where uh, the exposition is increased, um, the result of that increment is not zero. Only if the exp if the exposition is zero does it does this test say okay we've detected a zero, which means we've gone across that border and we have to. Um, as, uh, set the uh, the appropriate bit in the extend. Now again, this code does not know for which sprite number we have to do this. So there is a fancy trick we use here to uh, to do that. So we have I, 
I made a little um, uh, I tried to explain it in this way so moving from left to right this is it right this is it moving from left to right so the sprite position the sprite X position goes from FF to 00, zero. that's just the X position of the byte so we've detected that it's gone to zero so that's an alert you know we're going over that border um, suppose the sprite extend byte already had a one in it somewhere after we update the bit that corresponds to the player sprite which is this one we also want to leave this sprite intact so we we want to do two things we want to set this bit and leave all the rest as it is. So, um, in our example, uh, in in the example here, I'm I'm using um, uh, a different sprite. So, say we've we've selected sprite zero one two, sprite number three, which has this bit set. We load that from the bit table, as you can see here. You know, we oh. So we have a byte that looks like this. This represents our sprite number, of course. Now the problem is to set the bit that matches our sprite number without changing any other bit. So if we do an OR with the value of the extend byte as it is, we get exactly what we want. Because um, we, we've we set this one, which is one which is what we want to achieve. We want to uh, set this one. And in an OR, that is exactly what happens. All the other ones are zero. So if there is a one in the extend bit already, um, uh, then it's going to set that and all the rest are zeros. Uh, so this is exactly what we want. This is the result that we want. So this is exactly what happens here. We uh, load uh, our sprite number. We OR. Uh, with the accumulator uh, and the uh, the extend byte uh, and we store that value there but then we also have to tell the VIC register uh, to uh, you know we have to update the VIC register so this is what we do so that's how we move the sprite right um, and then after we've done that we basically do the same thing we also have to update the um, the X position. Now, if we move the sprite a left, I have to look for that, we have to do something else because in that case, we have to clear the bit instead of set it and leave the rest alone. Now, that's the other example. The sprite X position moves from 0 to 255. I'll pull in the drawing. Uh, from right to left, right, it's it was here, it went left, it became zero, and poof, we went to two fifty five. So now we want to clear the bit, the, clear the extend bit. So this is what this is what we do. We have the same thing. Um, this is the extend byte. We I've I've set another one uh, to one just for the example that we are going to leave this one alone. Here you can see that we load from the bit table our representation of the of the sprite that we want to update. It's that one. And this one is the one that is set and that we want to clear. So these two match. So what we do then is an exclusive OR with all ones, which basically just flips this one around. This is what happens here. We, we load the uh, sprite indicator we exclusive word with uh 255 or yeah and uh we flip this byte around so we get this so this byte is exactly like this one but everything turned around if we end this one with the extend x one that we had over here what happens is that everywhere where uh, there are two uh, ones we get the one 
but we've cleared our bit here so this is never going to be a one in an and operation so it turns to zero which is exactly what we want we flipped it around All right, this is the kind of um, binary maths that you have to so to be able to do if you want to do uh, machine language programming because this happens all the time so um, we store the new uh, extend um, byte into our own uh, label and then we store it in the vic chip as well so we've we've uh, we've cleared the bit for the vic meaning that the um, that the sprite will just move in the correct direction now and then we do the same again we update the actual um, exposition so this is like the meat and potatoes of this episode this is the the most difficult uh, bit now um, the the sharp viewer may have um, detected a, a minor problem and uh, that we're only detecting uh, X moves from 255 to 0 or 0 to 255 but that doesn't only happen in this you know in these locations because it happens here as well if X is 0 and we decrease by 1 it becomes 255 the sprite will will appear over here. Uh, the same uh, goes for here. If we increase x to 255 and we go one over, it becomes zero. It ends up here. Um, but there is no code that handles that. And the reason why is that this is our entire visible uh, screen during the game but what we do we have level design and the levels may uh, and I can tell you that they all look like this they all limit the player movement uh, because there will be characters here and there will be collision detection and the collision detection or whatever will say if the player ends up here we don't go any further so he never gets to 255 and the player never gets to this zero so that is why as soon as a, a level is in place the player sprite won't um, run into these situations so we simply don't check for them um, moving them out of the way um, that is that is it that is all uh, that is in this uh, uh in this episode of course there is you know move left and right and uh, uh, and up and down um they're, they're all very similar if you've, if you've written one you've uh, you, you've done them all um there's no diagonals in this one so uh, let's just see what happens uh, when we uh, when we run this right so here's our sprite again there it is uh, i have to set my uh, my joystick uh, we're reading joystick, um, the joystick in port 2, by the way. Um, and, of course, I don't have my uh, 360 controller uh, connected. So just bear with me while I do that. All right. Xbox 360 controller connected. And we run it again. And we go to the joystick settings. And we set this to that say okay now I can just start moving my sprite around to the left and to the right what I'm especially interested in is what happens here at 255 it just goes up and down work as well of course but this around this area here is where the problem occurs so if I move to the left zero somewhere whoop see if I move to the right see what happens uh, it's undefined. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, we're moving a sprite. See that, people? Boing, boing. This is, uh, this is what my first game felt like. <laughs> There's absolutely no physics or whatever. It's just plain movement. But it works. And it works without flickering or anything. So, uh, so far, so good. Uh, that's it, guys, for this one. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I hope to see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.